All right, so with our two get endpoints ready to go, in this video, let's go and create the first post endpoint. So while a get endpoint is basically there for your users to just retrieve some data, a post endpoint is for them to submit some data to you, usually to create a new object of some type. So back in Postman here, if we create a post request to the bank's endpoint and we provide some bank data in the request body, then we expect the service to just retrieve that data get the data and then create a, a new bank with this data. So afterwards, if we get all the banks, it should be in there uh, just like it does here. So let's go ahead and see how we can make such a post request work using Spring Boot. Now, as you can guess, I'm gonna start off in the test class. And what I'm gonna do is create a new nested class. I'm gonna give it the name of, um, let's say, add bank. You could also name them after um, the requests. Maybe that's even nicer. So we have post API banks, post new bank. And then I can also rename these up here. I actually like this. So get API bank, let's say account number. And then over here, it's just get API bank. I think that's even nicer. It's actually banks. That's even nicer than um, having the method names because what we're really testing here is the REST API. So it also reflects the level of abstraction a bit nicer. In here, I'm gonna create a new test case saying that it should add uh, the new bank. So here we'll learn quite a few new things because we need to now provide a request body and we need to provide an entire bank in the request body. So I'm gonna start off by saying, given we have a new bank, which is a bank of some account number, one, two, three. And then what do we have next? Trust, let's say 31.415 and a transaction fee of two. And then when we say mockmvc.post now, so we're making a post request to the base URL, so API slash banks. Then for now, let's just go on uh, and say, again, do a print. And we also want to expect, well, for now, let's just again, start with the status. And now we actually want to get the status code is created. And this is the number 201. And again, I'm gonna move this into a combined uh, when then block. But now the problem is we don't yet have any request body. So what we can do with this mock can we see syntax is open up curly brackets after the post. And in here, we can define, first of all, the content. Well, or maybe we start with the content type. So the content type for the request body should be JSON. And then the content itself, well, it should be basically our new bank object, but we have to serialize this. And what we can do to serialize it is we can use the same object mapper that um, Spring Boot uses by default which is uh, using a library called Jackson. So it's part of the application context by default. So what we can do quite simply up here is we can auto wire another bean. And this one is of type object mapper. So we have an object mapper of type object mapper. So this one, if you look at the hierarchy, um, is a bean or, or a class that comes from Jackson. And that's again, the standard library that Spring Boot uses for serializing objects to JSON and deserializing de objects from JSON. All right, um, what I don't really like here is this field-based injection and the late init variables. So what we can do instead is we can also move this to the constructor. And in here, we can now just say um, we have a val, so mock MVC of type mock MVC and we don't need the late in it anymore. So here, again, you also have to use auto wired. And well, for the test case, it's not really necessary to have the private uh, in there because the entire class is only available in the uh, test sources anyway. Um, and then the same for this one. So I'm gonna copy it here, but it's gonna look quite different. So it's gonna be just a val. 
All right, this is already looking a bit nicer, um, but what I also like to do is not use auto wired on each of the parameters here, but instead just tell Spring Boot to inject all the dependencies for the constructor. So for this, you have to annotate the constructor itself. In Kotlin, because of this syntax with the primary constructor in the class header, it's a bit, um, well, different because then you also have to explicitly use the constructor keyword up here. And this way, if you have many parameters here that have to be injected, you only need to have the auto wired uh, annotation once. Okay, so, so much for cleaning up the code. Let's go back to where we were. So the content now should be our, well, our new bank. However, we have to use the object mapper and then write that value as a string. And this will really just, um, yeah, serialize it to a JSON object, just the same way that we see it here in Postman. So it's not like a regular to string function, it's really a serialization to a valid JSON representation. So now, because this is becoming a bit more complex and it's kind of weird with the indentation here, I think what I'm gonna do is actually split this up now into a when and a then block. So what I wanna do for now is say this will be the when block. For now, we'll have to um, go up here and actually store this into a variable. So I'm gonna just call this foo for now and let's see what it returns. Um, it actually returns, well, just result actions, which isn't really the best name. Um, so let's say response. So we'll just call it response already um, or maybe perform post that may be even nicer with the um, following syntax. And then down here in the then block, we can say perform post and do print and expect. So this is, I think, reasonably readable. And this is actually indented uh, the wrong way now. All right, so perform post and do a print and then expect that the status is created. So this, let's go ahead and run our test class again. We actually don't really have a post endpoint here. So what it gives us is not a 404 because we do have an API slash banks. However, it only um, offers a get endpoint. So 405 means method not allowed because the post method is not allowed. The only allowed method on API banks currently is get. So let's go ahead in our bank controller and add a, you probably guessed it, a post mapping. Now this one doesn't need anything here because it's really just on API slash banks. And then let's say, um, I'm gonna call it add a bank. And now we're at an interesting point again because in this method here, we want to get a bank of type uh, bank and the way it's provided to us is in the request body. So similar to how we got data from the path or the URL before, now we want Spring Boot to extract the bank from the request body. So what we do is we say request body and that's really it. So Spring Boot will look at the request body and it will deserialize the JSON into a bank object. Of course, given that you provide a valid uh, JSON request body. And then this one um, really is a matter of design what it should return back here just for um, purposes of visibility. I'll just return the bank that was created. Well, we could return the bank, which will be a bit confusing uh, because it then looks like it was created, but we didn't actually do something. But of course, we'll fix it in just a minute. So let's go ahead and run the tests first. Uh, obviously, we didn't really do anything yet to make it uh, return the created status code, but we'll see. Let's just uh, run the tests. Okay, so we still have a failing test. And if you look down here, now we're getting 200, which is okay. But what we actually wanna have is the status code 201. So what we can do here is we can add a new annotation called response status. And this one of course takes a HTTP status as um, an argument. And there we can just say uh, return created if everything goes ex uh, as expected. All right, with this one, let's run them again. And now we should get our status code as expected. All right, perfect. We've uh, made our test green. So now let's go ahead and extend the test. 
because we also want to see that we have again a, uh, a content with content type application JSON. Of course, this is just if you decide to also return the bank that was created. Otherwise, this is really all that you expect from this endpoint. And then of course, another thing that we expect is on the JSON path, we expect that the um, account number is the same that we put in uh, above. So account number has a value of account one, two, three. And then of course, if you want to be very precise, we can also test the trust and transaction fee, which is probably a good idea. So these should be 31.415. And of course you could extract these into variables to not repeat each value. So now again, this is a bit um, confusing because we actually just return the bank. So this should pass because we're just returning back what we get, but we're not actually storing anything. So for now, let's just go ahead in our bank controller and obviously you want to actually call the service and we want to add a new bank with the given data. So let's go ahead, create this method, takes in a bank and returns the bank. And of course, uh, again, this will just delegate to the data source uh, for now. And maybe here on this level, we'll say create bank. And then we're gonna create this member function on the data source. Takes a bank, returns a bank, and I don't want any implementation in the interface itself. But I wanna go down to the mock. And then in here, down below the other implementations, we're gonna create our implementation. So in this mock data source, uh, what we wanna do quite simply is just add it to our list. So what we'll have to do in Kotlin is we'll have to make this a mutable list. I can also show you what happens if you just have a list of. That's basically a read-only list in Kotlin. So if you try to do banks.addBank, it really doesn't exist um, here, this add method. So it's gonna be a compile time error. And then we wanna return the original bank. But again, you'll have to make this a mutable list, which is quite a nice feature of Kotlin because it's by default, if you just say list off or set off or map off, you're just gonna get a read only data structure. And if you do want mutability in your code, you have to explicitly write it down. All right, so with this done, we actually have the bank stored in our list. So the test of course still passes, but what I wanna do now is I wanna create another test case, which again tests not only the happy path, but also what happens if something goes wrong or if something's wrong with the request. And to give you an example, what I'll do is I'll create a test where we're trying to create a bank with an account number that already exists. So here I'm gonna say it should return bad request so that's HTTP status code 400 that indicates that, well, something's wrong with your request. Usually the request body is invalid. Um, and this should happen if bank with given account number already exists. So let's say given an invalid bank, which is our bank with an account number of 1234 that already exists. And then just some other data, doesn't really matter. Then when we say mockmvc.post, and we can basically copy it from up here. So the whole when block, only that we've now called it an invalid bank, just to make it clear again. And then down here, we'll say perform post and do a print, and then expect that we have a status code uh, that is bad request. Right, then rerun the tests. This will not work right now because we haven't really done anything to make it work. But let's see what happens um, with the account number. So you can see down here, if you scroll down, what we get in the response is just a 201 created because we're just adding it to our list without any checks. So what we have now is we have two banks uh, in our mock data source with the same account number. And that's of course an invalid state for our application. Now to fix this, we'll have to go into our data source and then first perform a little check here. So if there's any element in the banks list where the account number is equal to the uh, new bank's account number, 
Then what we want to do is we want to say uh, throw an illegal argument exception. And here we can again provide some nice uh, error message that we can also expose in our response. So a bank with account number, well, the given account number, or rather bank dot account number already exists. And with this, if we now try to add a bank um, with an account number that already exists, before we even get to banks.add, we will just throw this exception. And then of course, in the bank controller, similar to how we did before, we'll have another exception handler. So I'm just gonna copy this one. However, instead of handling the no such element exception, we're now handling an illegal argument. And illegal argument in general probably means that something was wrong with the request body or the data that you received. So we can say this should handle bad request. Of course, you could use your own custom exceptions that are more fine grained and so that you know exactly this was definitely a bad request. However, for this very simple application, just using the default exceptions that we have, like no such element or illegal argument is more than enough to uh, handle these kinds of error paths. And then we want to again return the exception message in the request body. But of course, the status code should be bad request. All right, with that done, let's rerun our tests and see what happens. Looking good, all our tests are now green. Um, on this new test case down here, if we want to take a look, it says bank with account number 1234 already exists. And it gives us a status code of 400, which again is just a bad request. So all that's left now is to also try it in Postman. So not, don't forget to run the application itself like I always do. And then it's running again on port 9000. So now if I post a bank like this one, I get 201 created. You can see it here in Postman. And I get back the original bank that I put in. But more importantly, if I retrieve all the banks now, I can see that it has indeed been persisted, at least for the runtime of the application, because we're obviously just using an in-memory list and not a proper database. But yeah, you can see we have a post and we can retrieve the data that we submitted. All right, so everything's looking good. There's one quick tip I want to give you um, regarding the IDE or the tooling. So in IntelliJ, you'll see that it will say the bank controller is never used and the same for its methods. And that's because you're not really uh, using the object in your code and you're not calling these methods anywhere, but of course they're being used by the Spring framework. So what you can do is you can um, show the context actions with Alt Enter and say you wanna suppress this warning for any class that's annotated with REST controller and then it will stop showing it as unused. Of course, your exception handlers are also used by Spring Boot, so you don't have to call them anywhere manually. Um, same for your get mappings and post mappings. All right, yeah, but that's just a little tip on the side. Um, mostly in this video, you learned, of course, how to use post mappings and then how to get the request body data into your application. And also, by the way, how to override the status code very easily by just using the annotation. On top of that, for your testing, you've learned how to use the object mapper and how to create post requests in your tests using the proper media type and content. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please like this video and also check out my links in the description and I'll see you again in the next video.